The real estate industry is a global market that encompasses a wide spectrum of properties that serve a range of purposes in every country in the world. The biggest housing markets worldwide include United States, China, India, Germany and Japan. One company that is gradually spreading across the globe is G-Text Holdings. The company recently acquired a 40-acre property in the U.S. Houston, and upon completion, it will be the biggest green and smart estate in the U.S. Joining us on the, on the show this morning to discuss the issues that surround Diaspora investing and how his company is financing such a capital-intensive project is Dr. Stephen Akintayo, chairman of GTEx Holdings. Good morning. Welcome to the show and happy birthday in arrears. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, excellent. So, we've watched the growth of GTEx Holdings over the years. Recently, the company acquired a 40-acre property in the U.S., Houston, to be precise. That's a huge step outside of your home space. Why? Well, um, why we, I think the last conversation was surrounding why. Um, it's, it's funny how in Nigeria you work harder and um, you know, even the numbers seems to show that maybe your income grew, but at the end of the day, when you are doing your auditing in dollars, you are at a loss, right? So the graph keeps going down and down. And so it's important, it's wisdom really, to begin to expand to uh, other countries that can allow you to earn in uh, currencies that are stable, currencies that, because we, I mean, for us at GTEx, we're building a transgenerational business. Our goal is that 200 years from now, we're here. And so we have to think long term and we have to think of how to expand in countries where uh, we can build assets that, you know, at least we, no matter what happened, we have a base that is solid and can withstand the test of time. Well, I mean, sometimes when, you know, we spoke with you, you will be in Dubai. Uh, and at another time, you could be in the U.S., but thank God you are in Abuja. You are at home, maybe because of... Uh, I'm in Abuja at this time. <laughs> birthday celebration. <laughs> Which takes me to the question. Many will interpret this is your current move yeah. by GTEx as joining the Jackpot Syndrome by abandoning the Nigerian uh, business <laughs> space. Is GTEx actually migrating? So that's not true. I mean, if you look at the last three years, we've expanded heavily in Dubai, and yet we, we keep, in fact, we're, we're acquiring more estates. Um, you know, we're working harder. Of course, we have limitations in the housing sector uh, due to instability of, of the Naira dollar issue. And so it's difficult for us to build the number of housing units we can build uh, because of these issues. Uh, so, but we've expanded in Dubai in the last three years and, and, and even in the UK, even in the US, we have some project, we have a, in Valdosta in state of Georgia, we have a 20 unit of three bedroom townhouse that we're currently selling. In Alabama, we have a couple of houses we're currently selling. Uh, the only thing was that we didn't start with um, development in the U.S., even in Dubai as well. It was more of investing and, you know, rental income, flipping the properties. Uh, but now we feel that, you know, we should take that bull by the horn. Plus, a lot of Nigerians are, are jack buying. And for us, we are following where our customers are going. I mean, most our customers started with Nigerians. Uh, today now, of course, they're a bit diverse, but Africans, people of color, still remain majority of our customers, and we're going to where they are going. Remember, we are not into political patronage. We've never taken government contracts. We are not into, uh, you know, all this. Uh, and, we can, and that's why personally, on a personal level, now I can say I'm not part of those destroying Nigeria. So we have focused more on the harder way to make money, which is trying to get the individuals who have made their money legitimately and getting them to do business with you. So many have moved to the UK, you have to you know, follow them. They've moved to, to, to US. Um, in the next two years, we're also gonna do the same in Canada as well. So we're going where our customers are going, but we're still solidly here in Nigeria. We're still gonna continue to expand and make the best use of what uh, the system allows us. 
All right, fantastic. Well done. Now, $20 billion for 25,000 green and smart homes is still quite a big number. So what's the plan to effectively raise it? And do you plan to raise it within or outside Nigeria? Do you have investors? Okay, so uh, I think we're not yet at that, the $20 billion yet. Uh, the um, KT project is, uh, we, the proposal is about $150 million and it's going to be in the next five to seven years to complete the entire thing. But the good news is that we have already got an investor giving us 70% of that. So what we are only raising, and that's part of the advantage of you know, international investment, which we don't get in Nigeria. Right, so when people say, why are you expanding international? It's because the funding is there. So the only thing we are raising now is the 30%. Of course, the 30% is still no, not small money because that's about uh, uh, $45 million. Uh, but what we are doing is a portion of that is to partner with other real estate developers in Africa who are trying to expand to the US to say, we don't need the whole 40 acres. You can buy one acre and do your own small construction. At least you two you are diversifying uh, your investment in, in dollars. So one portion of the fundraising is from uh, developers who are currently in Africa who can partner with us and we sell a portion to them and they build it and we give them also flexible payment for that. Another portion is through a new fund we set up in the U.S. and we filed it with the U.S. Security Exchange Commission so that there's a lot of uh, um, um, scrutiny, there's uh, you know, uh, confidence on the part of the investor that the US government is checking the money and checking what the money is being used for, which is real estate investing now. Uh, so a portion of the fundraising will come from people who are investing, it's a debt syndication, it's a form of crowdfunding, and, and, so, and it's been filed with the Security Exchange Commission in the US. So a portion will come there. Another portion is also coming from our digital cooperative in Africa, uh, where that already has a pool of over 200 investors and they've been supporting what we do in the last four years or so. And we've also not disappointed them. They've always gotten their annual return on investment and we've been doing profit sharing the last four years. So uh, we did a webinar yesterday. They were all, all excited and everybody's excited to put in their funds. For me, in business, once there's integrity, once there's transparency, once you continue to communicate with your investors, money is not always the biggest problem, you know, uh, because once people see your antecedents, uh, they can trust you. So for now, we are still at that $150 million we're raising for this one. Uh, 2025 is still another 12 years away. And we believe God will raise that as well for all our, because that covers all our operation globally. Is there a deadline for investors in the project? Is there a deadline for yeah, investors? Yes, so for the U.S., uh, uh, yes, for this U.S. KT project, um, what we have done is to create a very flexible opportunity for those who are U.S. accredited investor. Uh, they're able to invest as low as $50,000 and therefore non-US accredited investors as low as $10,000. But every week we are now increasing that. So uh, by next week, the, this current tier A is over. We move to tier B, then tier C, then tier D, uh, when we then close. Hopefully we're hoping in the next four weeks we're done uh, with this project. But there are other new projects we're still going to be launching that people can key into as well. All right, so who is the target market for this? Because acquiring property outside Nigeria is certainly no mean feat. Well, so what we have realized is that the US market, real estate market is very regulated, right? Um, so for example, um, we are going to be working with Keller Williams. They're one of the biggest. And so they put the property, once we start selling the housing, because we are still at the point of uh, building up uh, permits and all of that. So we are not yet selling the houses. They will launch the house sales around August when we have gotten the building permits. Uh, but Keller Williams will be the one selling it on their portal. So the people from all over the world we buy, Americans, white, you know, Hispanics, you know, everybody will invest. So it's not difficult getting people to buy a house from you in America. Uh, the issue is usually raising the capital to even do the project. 
right? However, those raise, you know, investing in times of the capital, we have a good number of, of that coming as uh, people of uh, our color, because they are the ones who follow me. I have, I think, over 2 million followers on social media, so majority of them are people of color. So they are majorly those looking for opportunities in our company and what we do and things like that. Uh, but you remember, the, we're also getting a 70% funding from institutional investors in the US. They are not blacks, right? So, um, and, and that one is already sorted. It's just our own 30% that is being raised at the moment. Okay, Chief Tesla joins us first and foremost in Nigerian owned business. Do you believe you understand the global business space effectively to be able to operate within it? Yeah, you must have had some experience, but there must be challenges. How effectively can you operate there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So we, we've had experiences over the years. Like I said, uh, we've been in Dubai for the last four years. Uh, we've done in the UK in terms of brokerage and uh, auction, helping people acquire property. Even in the US, we have, uh, like I said earlier, in Valdosta, 20 unit of three bedroom. We have in Alabama. So we're not new. The only thing is that this is like buildings from scratch, because typically in America, you go buy a property that is, let's say, 20-year-old, 30-year-old, you renovate it, there are contractors, you renovate and then you sell. But this one is building from scratch. But again, it's easier in America compared to Africa because it's all regulated. All your contractors, for example, one of the things I have always said is, why will building collapse in Nigeria? And then the person arrested is the investor. I've never seen it anywhere in the world. In America, your contractors, your engineers are licensed. If anything go wrong, they lose their license, first of all. They are, of course, uh, you know, sent to jail, right? So uh, those places are very regulated. You don't even have headache because everybody must have the license before they can even work with you as a contractor. Um, you know, the whole process is step by step and there's a whole lot of, so it's easier. The reason why it's even difficult in Nigeria is because it's not been systemized, the structure isn't there, the policy isn't there. So as a developer, you are, your, you are the alpha and the omega, you know, you are the, even the so-called regulators are just after collecting money. They're not really checking whether quality is being done. It's just about like, pay your, the money for permits and, and things like that. But in the U.S., it's a whole different ballgame. It's step by step. It's heavily regulated. And I'm a Harvard-trained, you know, real estate developer. Okay, so uh, I think, and we've been in this for years now, so that's not an issue. All right. For investors outside Nigeria, how will they repatriate these monies? Oh, so beautiful. Again, because you are investing directly to, to, to a U.S. fund and the investment is in dollars, um, everybody is getting their returns in that same uh, uh, fashion. So you invest in dollars, you get your returns in dollars. Um, and uh, we've always done that. We do distribution every month uh, through our digital cooperative. Every month we, we d distribute to investors who have invested with us. And I think that's one of the unique things about GTEx. We have a slogan that says, what we do with our investors is called profit sharing. And, you know, it's not easy to have operated in Nigeria and you started this program four years ago and you did not default once in four years, and I'm talking of the recent four years, you know how tough it's been. Uh, so if we could do it here, that is a lot more difficult. I mean, how much more international uh, investment at a more stable economy? All right, thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bar, for joining us again on The Morning Show. We look forward to seeing you again, certainly.